Okay, we're going to take a look at factoring by grouping. So if you guys take a look at our expression, we have 5x cubed plus 25x squared plus 2x plus 10. So when you guys are factoring by grouping, it's super simple. You just have to find your groove with the actual technique. The very first thing you're going to do is you're going to divide your expression in half. Right? And then we're going to factor out the GCF for the greatest common factor on the left side. And then we're going to repeat the same process for the right side. So I always like to say, we do numbers first and letters second. So first things first, you always want to check to make sure that both of your terms have the same element. So you see how this has a 5 and this has a 25? Since they both have numbers, that means I can factor out a number. You see how we have x cubed and x squared? You see how they both have x's? That means I can factor out an x. So I know that the GCF between 5 and 25 is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that 5 to the front. I'm going to create my parentheses. All right, now when I'm factoring out variables with exponents, right, you always factor out the smallest of the two. So you see how we have x to the third and x to the second? Because two is the smallest, this is what we're actually going to factor out, okay? All right, and now we're going to take this term that we factored out, and we're going to divide both of these terms by 5x squared. Okay, so we know 5 divided by 5 gives us 1, and when we are dividing exponents, we really subtract them. So 3 minus 2 is going to give us x to the first power. Now, you don't have to put that 1 as an exponent if you don't want to, but I just use it as a reminder. All right, 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. Now, when I do x2 divided by x2, essentially 2 minus 2 gives us 0, right? And anything to the 0 power is 1, so we're just going to go ahead and cancel those out. It's no need to do the extra math in this sense. All right, now we're going to repeat the same process on the right side. So if we look at our terms, we have a number and a number. So I know I can factor out a number, but you see how we only have one variable here? Because this 10 doesn't have an x attached to it, I can't factor a variable out, but I can factor out an actual value. So the GCF between 2 and 10 is 2, right? Which means I'm going to divide everything by 2. All right, so 2 divided by 2 gives me 1, and we're going to bring down my x, and then 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. All right, once you get to this part, you want to make sure that both of your values inside of your parentheses match. Okay, so here we have 1x plus 5, 1x plus 5, so those match. So now we're going to do our final two answer. So our first expression is always going to be what we actually factored out. So I factored out a 5x squared. All right, make sure you guys are paying attention to your signs because we factored out a positive 2. So that's plus 2, right? And then our second expression is going to be our matching expressions here. So we're only going to write, even though we see this expression twice, we're only going to write it once when it comes to our answer. And this is the final answer. So that means that when we factor down 5x cubed plus 25x squared plus 2x plus 10, we get a set of binomials, so 5x squared plus 2 times 1x plus 5. So that means if I multiply these two binomials together, my final answer should be the expression that we started with. Okay? All right, let's try another example. x cubed plus 2x squared can't read this again. plus 3x plus 6 okay so when we are factoring by grouping split in half factor your first set factor your second set so I always check for letters and numbers all right, so you see how here we just have an exponent. I mean, we just have a variable, but we don't have an actual value there. So that means I can only factor out my variables, right? And we always factor out based on the smallest exponent. And of course, if you don't see one, you can always put a one there as a placeholder. All right, so I'm going to factor out an x or x to the first power. Let me bring that down so. All right, which means I'm going to divide. All right, so x3 divided by x gives us x2. All right, and then x divided by x, of course, that's going to give us 0. So those are going to cancel out. So we're going to bring down our plus 2. Okay? 
Wait, did I miss right something? Was that squared? Oh, my mistake. I didn't write that down right. See, I already knew when I started doing it, something wasn't going to be right. Okay, so if we take a look at our exponents, we have x3 and x2, so I can factor out x2. All right, so if I divide by x2 and I divide by x2, all right, if we divide x3 by x2, we're just subtracting. So 3 minus 2 gives us 1, so x1. All right, x2 and x2, if I subtract 2 minus 2, that gives me 0, so those cancel out, and I just bring down my 2. All right, and then we're going to repeat the same thing on the right side. So if you notice, we have a letter and a letter, I mean, a number and a number, so I can factor out a number, but we only have one letter. Since there's no letter here, I'm only going to factor out the number. So the GCF between 3 and 6 is 3. All right, so I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, bring down my x. All right, and 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. So do these match? Yes. If I have a variable by itself and I don't see a value there, I can put a 1 there as a placeholder. But in this point in time, at this level of math, you should know that these are the same. Okay? All right, so since that checks out, let's go ahead and fill in our final answer. All right, so we always put what we factored out, x squared. We factored out a positive 3, so that's plus 3. And then x plus 2 or 1x plus 2, doesn't matter how you write it. And this is going to be our final answer. So the biggest key is making sure you guys understand how to find GCF. So everything else is pretty cut and dry and super simple. So remember, divide your expression in half, factor out the first half, factor out the second half, and you're going to know if you did it correctly if what's inside the parentheses actually matches. If you see an error here, that means you have to go back and make sure you actually factor out the GCF and also watch your signs.